everyone, this is Celine from Blue Cala Patterns and this video series we're making the Lunaria Satchel. Um, this is my uh, final pattern for the Carried Away uh, Pattern Collective for this year. Um, before you start, make sure that you print out the pattern and read through the entire pattern before you start. Um, there are some pattern pieces to print out at the end of the pattern. Uh, nothing needs to be taped together in here. It's all fairly straightforward. You just print them out and cut them out. Um, on page three, I've included a cutting chart and uh, I use a cutting chart all the time. I didn't include a cutting section because I felt it was a duplication of the cutting instructions. Uh, so in this pattern, I only have a cutting chart. Um, so what I do is I just use a pencil and as I cut a, a piece, I check it off in the chart. Um, so the, oh, and the top part here is all of the pieces that you're going to cut from the pattern pieces. And then there's a few cut to measurement pieces where you should be cutting with a ruler. Um, just to start, what I'll do is I'm going to go through what you need in terms of uh, notions and supplies. Um, it doesn't require a lot of hardware. Um, all you really need is two one and a half inch rectangle rings, a one and a half inch rectangle slide. Um, I'm using, it's optional, it, you don't have to add purse feet if you don't want to, but I'm, I like purse feet, so I'm going to add four purse feet to the bottom of my bag. You're also going to need a, um, an 18 millimeter magnetic snap for the flap, and then you're going to need a few zippers. I'm not using pre-made zippers, I'm using zipper tape. Uh, so when you're using zipper tape instead of pre-made zippers, the general rule is that you cut two extra inches of zipper tape for the size that's given. So for the main closure on the flap, you need a 12 inch pre-made zipper. Uh, for this one, uh, you don't need to add two extra inches, just add one extra inch if you're using zipper tape. So this is a zipper tape that is 13 inches long. And you don't have to use uh, a double pull zipper, but I like the way that it looks. Uh, a single pull zipper will work fine if that's all you, that you have. And then for the front exterior zipper pockets, you need two seven inch zippers if you're using pre-made zippers. I'm using zipper tape. So in this case, cut two extra inches. So these are nine inches long. And then for the interior zipper pocket, um, you can use a nine inch pre-made dress zipper, but again, I just have so much zipper tape that I decided to use uh, zipper tape, and this is a number five zipper. You can use number five, number three for your interior zipper pocket. It, both of them will work. And instead of nine inches, I have 11 inches long here. But if you're using pre-made zippers, just follow the sizes that are given in the supply section. So I'm going to set these aside and then I'm going to take out all of the pieces that I've cut and go through them with you using the cutting chart as a guide. So now I'm going to talk about all the pieces that you need to cut out using the cutting chart that I provided. Um, I'm going to start in the order in the cutting chart. So with your main body pattern piece. Okay. So that is this pattern piece here. So this is your main body pattern piece and you're also going to use it to cut out your interior slip pocket. So um, here I have, so this here I'm using a metallic SX linen for my bag's exterior. So I have two exterior pieces and matching pieces of fusible woven interfacing and then I have two lining pieces also with two matching pieces of fusible woven interfacing which I'm going to fuse to the wrong side of all four of these pieces and then I also cut out two pieces of foam interfacing these are going to go on the wrong side of my exterior pieces um, a little bit later on 
and also using this piece I'm cutting out my slip pockets so you'll see here the dash line it says slip pocket fold line you're just folding the pattern piece like this and then you use this bottom portion to cut out your slip pocket pieces on the fold uh, so this is a cut on the fold piece for everything and I have two lining pieces and two matching fusible woven interfacing pieces that I used for uh, this bottom par portion of this pattern piece. Next we cut out all of our flap pieces. So this is your flap pattern piece right here and it's also cut on the fold. So for your flap this is going to be my exterior fabric so this is what's going to show on the front of the bag. And then I cut out a piece of uh, matching fusible woven interfacing. Now here, normally I, for the underside of the flap, I would um, also use, like in the pattern, I say to use fabric, but I decided to use uh, my uh, exterior two fabric and it's vinyl, so I don't have uh, fusible woven interfacing for this piece. It's thicker, so it doesn't need it. Um, now, if you're using fabric for the underside of your flap, and it's a directional print, like this here, this is a directional print, we want the flowers facing up, make sure that when you cut that fabric, that you're cutting it this way, where the, the direction of the print goes this in this direction, so that when you open your flap, that your fabric isn't upside down. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're cutting that piece out. And then, for the lining, because the flap is actually a giant zipper pocket, I have two lining pieces and two matching fusible interfacing for those lining pieces. And then I also cut out a piece of fusible fleece. Now in the instructions, I tell you to fuse this to the piece of exterior fabric that's going to be the underside of your flap. Now because I am now the reason why I say to put on the underside is because we're installing the magnetic snap there and I like to have the structure, the added structure of the fleece to that fabric because I don't like installing uh, a magnetic snap into uh, interfaced cotton. I just don't find it sturdy enough. So that's why I suggest putting it there. Because I'm using uh, vinyl and I don't really like fusing interfacing to vinyl or cork. Um, I'm going to actually put it on my exterior fabric so it will be fused to the wrong side of this fabric here. Okay, so that is all of the pieces for the flap. In addition to that, this is in the cut to measurement section, so I'm sort of uh, uh, skipping ahead here. But for the flap, you also need two zipper tabs, and they are two inches wide by, sorry, two inches wide by one and a half inches high, and you need two pieces with matching interfacing. Okay, and then next we have our side panel, which is here. So this is your side panel pattern piece. And with it, it's pretty simple, uh, it's straightforward. You're going to cut out two exterior pieces and two lining pieces and four pieces of fusible woven interfacing. And then for the bottom. So the bottom of your bag um, it's there's a pattern piece for it but I also provided the measurements in case you want to cut to measurements I did the same thing for the side panel uh, pattern piece because it's just a rectangle you have the option of either using the pattern piece or cutting to measurements okay so for the bottom I have two exterior pieces and because I'm using my exterior two fabric I'm using vinyl I'm not cutting out any fusible woven interfacing. It's thick enough. It doesn't need the interfacing. And then I cut out two lining pieces and two fusible uh, woven interfacing. Now, obviously, I could have done this piece a little bit differently and have it cut on the, uh, cut on the fold piece and just make it one. But I wanted the look of the seam in the middle. It's just a personal preference thing. And then in addition for the bottom, I'm skipping here uh, down to the cut to measurements portion of the cutting chart. The bottom firm interfacing, uh, it's just a piece of Peltex or any other uh, firm sew-in interfacing. And it's eight inches by three 
uh, three and three quarter inches. For my front pocket, so this one you can't cut to measurements because it has a curved shape to it. Um, the front pocket piece, you're going to cut out one exterior fabric, one lining fabric, and then here again, I decided to use my exterior two fabric. So I only cut out one fusible woven interfacing for the lining portion. And this part here, I'm not going to interface it because it's thick enough. But if you're using fabric, make sure you cut two interfacing as well. Now for the um, exterior zipper facing, so that's the two uh, exterior zipper pockets on the front of the bag. Um, I cut out, here they are. So this is your exterior zipper facing. You can use the pattern piece or cut to measurements. I cut out two in my exterior fabric, so in that metallic SX linen, there's two pieces here, and two pieces of fusible interfacing. And then the exterior zipper pocket piece. Uh, this is a pattern piece, but also can, can be cut to measurements if you like. Uh, four lining pieces and four fusible interfacing pieces. So for the side of the bag where we're going to attach the straps, you're going to need two side connector pieces. They are three inches wide by two and three quarter inches high. And then you're also going to need the side connector band, which is four and three quarter inches wide by two inches high, and you need two of those. So I'm using vinyl. I did not cut any interfacing. If you're using fabric, make sure that you cut matching interfacing pieces for all of these four pieces. Um, and then the last thing that I have here, these are from the cut to measurement section. I have one interior zipper facing and matching interfacing, and that's 11 inches wide by two and a half inches high. The interior zipper pocket pieces. I have two lining pieces, two matching interfacing, 11 inches wide by seven inches high. Now, for the adjustable strap, if you're using fabric for your adjustable strap, use these cut measurements. So you want it six inches high by 58 inches or whatever, whatever length you want for your strap. Because I'm using vinyl and it can get very thick if I fold it, uh, if I fold it for, so that it's four layers thick, that's way too thick around the rectangle slide. So what I've actually done is cut two strips that are I think 54 inches by three inches high. And I'm going to use the method found in my Baronia Bowler video series, video, the video part five. That's the technique that I'm going to use uh, to create my adjustable strap. So I'm not going to cover it in this video because it's just it's just repetitive. If you want to see how that's done, go see Baronia video five. Um, so now all I'm going to do is go over to my press and I'm going to interface all of my pieces and then I'll just quickly uh, go over them because there's a couple of things that we need to do differently. Oh, and I almost forgot. There's one extra piece I need to cut. This is going to be for the gusset of your bag and this is your foam interfacing. So it's called, in your cutting chart, it's called the gusset foam interfacing and it's 30 and a half inches uh, by four, four and three quarter inches high. Okay, so I'm going to go and interface all my pieces and then I'll just quickly go through them before we continue on to video two. So I've now interfaced um, all of my pieces with their matching fusible woven interfacing. Um, in terms of the foam interfacing, the only piece that you're going to use uh, for now is one of the main body pieces. Uh, for the, the main body piece that will be at the back of your bag, uh, you're just going to baste one of the foam interfacing pieces to the wrong side uh, for now. If you want to um, make the seams a little bit less bulky, you can baste it to this piece using a zigzag stitch and that will compress the edges a little bit and make it less bulky. 
Um, the other main body foam interfacing piece, you're going to set it aside for now. We're not going to use it just yet. We have to um, install our zipper pockets and our, uh, our slip pocket to the front of the bag. Okay, so what I've done now is, uh, what I like to do is group all of the pieces and the hardware pieces that will uh, need to be assembled together. Um, I like to uh, assemble them in, uh, sort them in groups. So for the front exterior of my bag, I have the main body exterior piece, my two uh, zipper facing pieces, the zippers that I'll need, and the four lining pieces. I also have my two uh, front pocket pieces and I have the thicker half of the magnetic snap with its matching, matching washer that will be installed together and then sewn to the front with the two zipper pockets. When that is done, we're going to attach the remaining main body foam interfacing piece. But for now, I've set that inter interfacing piece aside. For the flap, you're going to need the, uh, the, the longer zipper, the 13 inch or 12 inch zipper. Uh, the other half of the magnetic snap, so this is the thinner half that's going to be installed, and the washer. So this is the, the front of my flap, so the exterior front piece of my flap. And I have the fusible fleece fused to this piece only because, again, I'm using vinyl for the underside of my flap and I don't want to fuse fleece. So I did it to the uh, front instead for this bag. Um, and then I have my two uh, zipper tab pieces and then the two lining pieces. So all of these will be assembled together. For the exterior gusset, you will need your purse feet if you've decided to install purse feet. You're going to need your one and a half inch rectangle rings, your side connectors, your side connector bands, the two exterior side panel pieces, and the two bottom pieces. Now, once those are assembled, you're going to need the bottom firm interfacing and the gusset foam pieces. So that, I'm set, I've set those aside for now. And then for your lining, you should have two lining side panel pieces and two lining bottom pieces interfaced. And then you have your two main body lining pieces. One of them has the two slip pockets. So we're on one of them, we're going to install our slip pockets. And on the other one, we're going to uh, install our interior zipper pocket. So this is all that we do for now for the preparation. If you've done a fabric adjustable strap, make sure that you fuse the, inter the interfacing to the wrong side of that piece. Um, and that's it for now. Uh, so in the next video, we're going to begin the assembly of our bag.